The other day, the Synod uh, Twitter account, uh, Synod.va, they put out a, the following tweet from an interview of um, Father Timothy Radcliffe, or a um, Dominican, and it, the title of the tweet was, Many are enthusiastic about synodality, but not everyone. And then there was a short article um, republished from the Dominican website. And I thought the tweet was interesting. Uh, I do like following events in the church, but uh, many are enthusiastic. But exactly how many people are actually enthusiastic about this process? Because I don't know anybody. <laughs> I don't know a single Catholic that uh, is enthusiastic, that, that, that uh, you know, that loves the faith, that say, yeah, let's go with this. This is a great development for the church. I mean, I'm just, I'm just saying, you know, in the fact, you know, anybody that I've known or worked with or prayed with, you know, nobody seems to be, yeah, let's go with synodality. This is a brilliant development for the church. It's just been, you know, a dead duck, an absolute dead duck, uh, you know. And I was wondering, well, like, do the church not see what, what's happening? Anyway, I just thought, do you know what? I'm going to do a poll on my channel just to, to feel it. Now, I know my channel might be very, uh, people f uh, subscribe to my channel, probably more traditional than others. But surely, surely those that love the synodal process might dip in and, cast a vote yeah i'm enthusiastic for synodality uh so i did it on on the youtube channel and then i did it on twitter on youtube it got so far uh 1800 people to vote uh overwhelmingly 94 percent are not enthusiastic about synodality and only six percent are and on twitter it was a, a lesser the amount of people that actually voted but the the percentages were exactly the same which i thought was fascinating the top comment on that poll on YouTube was the following comment, which I thought was very telling. And it says, if I wanted to become an Anglican, I'd join the Church of England. And I suppose that really resumes up this whole synodal process, this so-called listening in the spirit and so on. You know, it's as Cardinal Muller said, you know, when he came, he heard about it and he was talking about it, he says it's the hostile takeover of the Catholic Church. And so those that have been listening to him have just avoided it at all costs. Uh, we, you know, we don't have a strong Catholic leader in the church promoting this process to say, yeah, get involved. This is the future of the church and so on. No. You know, we have the polarised elements, you know, Father James Martin. Yeah, it's brilliant. Go for it. This is fantastic. Yeah, we need synodality and synodality. And Father Jerry O'Hallan here in Ireland, another Jesuit. Yeah, synodality. This is it. The future of the church. And, uh, and then when you see the agenda and what was spoken and the synodal reports, it is carbon copy what the Anglican Church did because they introduced synodality or the syn... Um, the synod, their synod as kind of their legislative, you know, assembly in which matters were discussed and approved and changed. And what came out of that was the most uh, liberal things that you can actually imagine to so much, to such an extent that the church has been falling over itself to, to destroying itself. You know, let's face it. Uh, it, it. It's the truth. You know, any any of the most woke elements that you could imagine in this world were, were introduced into the Anglican Church via their synodal process. And, you know, the, the Catholics did, the Catholic Church didn't do itself any favours in, in how it, it implemented this synodal process, in my view. You know, it kicked off just before the synodal process kicked off. They did a survey on the traditional Latin Mass. So they, Rome did a survey and then Traditionis Custodis uh, kicked off uh, without a single consultation of a single layperson worldwide. Zero. We're not listening to you. So the Holy Spirit does not work in the traditional movement. So a priori, we have made a decision. You know, Vatican II is the only game in this town. There is only one form of the Roman Rite. There is no way that the Holy Spirit is able to work in the traditional movement. End of story. Case closed. Get out of the parish. No advertising. 
So this was all before the Sinatra process. And then when the Sinatra kicked off, you had the most liberal themes in that you could imagine. You know, it was like bingo card. We could have predicted what was going to come up in the Sinatra. I mean, even in when the Irish document came out and I said, hold on a second, not a single mention of the pro-life cause. Not a single, I like, uh, so it is, it is just, a you know, a, a, a woke shop. It simply is. And, and I know bishops have been saying and what the, I've been told in Rome is, look, it's going to take 20, 30 years. We need to educate the seminarians coming in. We'll get into their seminary training. And, you know, over the course of the next, next decades, those priests. But when I'm talking to young seminarians, they're saying, yeah, they're talking about synodality, but we know it's bullshit and we just shut up. You know, the seminarians themselves are just there sitting with their, you know, rolling their eyes. Yeah, we have to sit through this talk about Father such and such has come to talk about synodality. And, you know, we'll be a part of a synodal church. And we're just there. Yeah. You know, keep our head down, say nothing. Don't don't rock the boat. You know, keep the bishop happy. Don't don't create problems. And like the young generation of Catholics know well you know, because we they've heard all of this before. He said, I'm we yeah, we've heard all of this before, but we're not taking it anymore. Uh you know, you have it's like the dying gasp of the post Vatican II nineteen seventies church. The dying you know, we have to we have to come back and reinforce this. It it's not working. It's not working. And I don't know to our leadership so do not see what Catholics are seeing. You know, because you have a very polarised church. You have those that are very enthusiastic about synodality, those that are, you know, clearly not enthusiastic about synodality. And the middle of the church actually looking at both sides. We don't know what's going on here. You know, somebody that's new in their faith, that comes to the faith, and they see this discussion on YouTube, and they see it in the church, and oh, what what is it? Can you explain it to me? Well... Look, the best, the best uh, explanation I can give. Do you know the Anglicans? They have a synod and they all get together and they discuss things and then they make changes. <laughs> the Catholic Church hasn't said that they're going to do this. You know, the Pope hasn't said he said it's not going to change dogma, but it hasn't. That the, the process hasn't done itself any favors in my estimation. And so it's it's an interesting time in the church, really, when you know the younger generation that. You know, in the midst of such a secular world, you know, if you commit yourself to the faith in your 20s, you know, you're committing yourself to something serious. I, I know very few that are off with the, the whole liberal element of the church because that hasn't produced any fruits. You know, the sisters that threw off their habits in the 1970s, you know, that became, you know, no habit, no veil, no nothing, no identity. They have no vocations. They are dying. You know, without a shadow of a doubt. Those that don't have a Catholic identity in their dress, in their charism, in their... In their have, have just died a death. And we see, you know, those who have vocations today are those that actually commit to a Catholic identity. And the church can't see that. Or the leadership in Rome can't see that. You know, it's, I, I find it amazing. You know, over the last four months, we had Tradiciones or Fiducia Supplicans, which was, you know, talk about an epic fail. And then we've had four months explaining, explaining, explaining. And then on 60 minutes, the Pope explains, look, we can't bless these couples, blah, blah, blah. You know, you could have, we could have had a press conference back in December uh, and somebody walk us through what is happening here. But I see, I suppose Rome doesn't understand the church. You know, when the Pope criticizes traditional bishops of having a suicidal men mentality, that ha they have a rigid dogmatic box, does the Pope not see that's a direct result of what the church itself has done to them. You know, it is a direct fruit of the church. 
you know, because do you, do you, I'd rather them, bishops with a dogmatic mentality in their box, than a McCarrick promoted up Cardinal of, in Washington, you know, practically the primate of the American church. And the Pope doesn't see it. And instead of playing to, you know, because a good leader will play to the strengths and bring everybody around. Okay, so you're you're overly focused on one thing. Well, look, we'll play to, we'll play to your strength, but we'll also kind of bring everybody along with them. Bring the whole church along with you. The traditional and so you know, bring all elements along. That's what a good leader in any organization would do. Would strengthen the organization. Bring everyone along. You have this point of view. It's very rigid. You know, there's how do you how do you introduce change? By talking. By actually talking to them. But the Pope has decided that there are certain people that cannot have a voice and won't be talking to or even acknowledged. And so when sixteen thousand or somebody says twenty thousand, let's say sixteen to twenty thousand young people in France go on the Chartres pilgrimage, you know, 16,000 young people in France go on a Chartres pilgrimage over three days with traditional Latin Mass. The church has nothing positive whatsoever to say about those young people. Nothing. There's no tweet from Synod account. There's no tweet from the Pope. Cardinal Fernandez didn't mention them. Cardinal Paroline doesn't mention them. They are a nothing in the church. You mean nothing to us. We don't acknowledge you. We don't send a message from Rome to 16,000, encouraging them, lifting them up. You're yesterday's church. We're not acknowledging you and we're moving forward with tomorrow's church. And I'm just the voice of reason here in this. You know, uh, as I said, Outreach Apostolate by James Martin has gotten how many letters from the Pope? Okay, wouldn't it be nice if those 16,000 people that went on pilgrimage to Chartres got one tweet from the Pope, one letter from the Pope, one word of encouragement from the Pope. Keep the faith. And the, and the Pope cannot see what he cannot see. And that's not a criticism in the sense that it's just an observation of what is going on in the church. I mean, it was Cardinal Muller that, 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 that encouraged them. You know, where are the French bishops? You have 16,000 young people in your country. Where are the French bishops? No, you're yesterday's church. We don't, you're not part of our agenda anymore. We're not, you're not part of our parish anymore. Get your mass out of there. Go off to your specific churches where you'll have it. Go off to a fraternity church or an institute of Christ the King of the Church. You know, and I, I just don't understand what's going on in the church. I honestly do. And I think I'm the voice of reason here. So to say that not everybody's enthusiastic about synodality, 94% of people couldn't care less of Catholics about this process. Because... Where have we seen it before in the Anglican Church? What was their agenda? What is the agenda that we see being played out in the Synod? The exact same agenda as the Church of England. Women priests, women ordination, and then the Pope has to deny it. And then we have Cardinal Hollerick. Cardinal Hollerick. Well, the Pope says this, but I think, you know, we can push it forward. You know, please. How about engaging going out and being missionary and engaging the church, using all of the tools that we have available as Catholics to engage the church. If people want to go to a traditional Latin Mass and they're catechized and they're formed and they're properly formed, let them off. If they want to go to a charismatic Mass and they're catechized and they're formed, let them off. What is the problem? If people want to go to a holy Kerbana in the Cerro Malabar church, off you go. I go to a, I would, I go to a Kerbana mass, divine liturgy, far prefer it <laughs> to what we, in our bland Novus Ordo. It's an hour and a half. You know, I get a translation of the Kerbana and I follow along the divine liturgy. I'm engaged in their divine worship. 
where the priest has taken time to actually dress himself as a priest, where they've taken their time to actually dress the altar and say, this is a serious event in our church. We're going to spend time. We're going to spend money. We're going to spend effort. We're going to face God, lead people to God. We're not throwing the chalice on the altar and putting up the most ugliest candles and whatever. I mean, let's face it. Look at our church. Look at our Catholic, Roman Catholic church. What previous generations held sacred is despised by many. Not a single tweet. Not a single letter. Nothing from Rome. They don't care about 16,000 Catholics on a pilgrimage in Europe. It was, over those three days, the largest single Catholic youth event in this continent. And Rome couldn't care a less. I think I'm the voice of reason here and saying, look, you have to encourage everybody. And if, you, if we're truly a synodal church, you have to listen to them and bring them in. But I don't, th- I don't see a future for what this, this semi-Protestant listening class thing is. Young seminarians will listen, but try to engage them, you know. Because what man today is going to seriously take his vocation seriously and want to, you know. The generation that's coming up in the church now is a complete opposite to the 1970s, live or whatever. That, that. People are looking for serious Catholicism. They're looking to be formed. They're looking for spiritual fathers. What the church needs now is an age of spiritual fathers. Church fathers. Where are the church leaders? You know, there's this American footballer. He did a video on a graduation video, which has got massive amount of coverage in the States. And he's calling out church fathers. Well, I'm going to do the same in Ireland. Wake up. Wake up. Be men of faith. Be church fathers. Be church leaders. Not church mice. Oh, I'm doing, the world is this and I'm afraid to off. Be a leader. Catholics are crying out for strong leadership in the church. Strong leadership to, that bring all elements of the church together. You know, you're organizing a pilgrimage with 16,000 people. Well done. Here you go. I'll pray for you. We'll listen to you. We love you. You're part of the church. You're baptized in the church. That is the Holy Spirit moving. Where is the leadership? You know, where is the leadership in the church? It's just lost, absent, and the voice has died. And the church is becoming completely irrelevant in Europe because we don't have church leaders. You know, Bishop Ray Toulon in France, Bishop Ray, Dominic Ray, got investigated by the Vatican. Why did he? Because he encouraged everybody in his diocese. He listened to everybody. Did he make mistakes? Probably yes. But the people that don't make mistakes in the church. Do you know who the people who are the bishops who are not making mistakes in the church? Are the bishops who do absolutely nothing. Nothing. They just sit around and let the faith die. They don't get a a, a call from the nuncio because they do nothing. Parish consolidations, closing communities, diminishing parishes. They're asleep at the wheel. They have no faith. They do nothing. Did Bishop Dominic do make errors? Yes. But he also encouraged everybody. You know, and this is the strange thing. He's charismatic, but he encouraged a traditional movement. Were there mistakes made on the charismatic and the traditional side? Yes. But he encouraged everybody. And it's a bishop that takes, that has, that lo- there's this zeal in him for the church. You know, we can do so much more. Why are we letting it die? You know, I met, I met with a traditional priest that uh, revived a dead, par- a dead church. 
You know, the bishop said, well, look, there's this church. It's closed. Nobody's going to it. You can use it for, 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 uh, for traditional Latin mass. And so he opens the church and, you know, they have 200 people coming to traditional Latin Mass in this church. Like, are we going to sit back and watch the Catholic faith in Europe just disappear, die off? Or are we going to encourage the church to come to renew? I mean, the Pope, in my view, and this is my view, the Pope, in my view, it will be, in decades to come, the greatest reformer in the Catholic Church since the Council of Trent. But not the way he thinks. But he will be. Pope Francis will be the greatest reformer in the Catholic Church since the since Pope Pius V in the Council of Trent. But in ways we can't imagine. And that is my my take on the current papacy I'm not lambasting the Pope I'm just saying if you want to see the action of the Holy Spirit in this papacy it might be in places you don't expect because he has woken up the church but you know leadership has to rally the church you have to bring everybody together you know what previous generations held sacred has to be has to be held sacred today. You know, we could do so much more to give the gospel the good news. I think it's an incredible time to be Catholic. But I just, like like that layman in the States, that, that footballer, I say to, this, to Ireland, where is our leadership? Where are our bishops? Where are our priests? We need church fathers, spiritual fathers, and mothers, you know, Sister Breach McKenna, as a church, as a, as a mother in the church, is one of the greatest charismatic figures, but also the, one of the greatest leaders. And she's not afraid to 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 actually give us to speak the truth. You know, we need Christ. I mean, and as I said, this is a pa- I, I feel very passionate about, but I the. The agenda in the church at the moment is not engaging the Catholic Church. It's not. It's engaging in one element and there, yeah, yeah, let's tweet about synodality and this and we're off there, really. We're a synodal church. It's not there yet. We'll get into the seminaries. We'll form the seminarians. I I tell you, the younger generation in... uh, the coming into the church today are, are are looking for God. They're looking for, you know, to be to be men of God. Because the liberal element, you know, the church has allowed liberal seminarians in. God is separating the church. You're either for God or against him. You know, you can't be half in a seminary and half in the world. Half chaste and half not chaste. Those days are gone. You know, Christ is calling for commitment in this age. And those that are committing to the church are looking for something greater to follow. And they're looking for a great leader. And Catholics are rallying around great leaders at the moment. But the synodal process isn't. Isn't capturing imaginations and minds and hearts. It's the hostile takeover of the Catholic Church. It's the Anglican Synod rebranded as Catholic, even though it's not the same structure. I mean, last year was, need I say more? The church ex- do their own examination. You had a synod and synodology, you had talking points, and you had a document, fiducia supplicans. Surely that could have been circulated in a synod in a confidential way. But no, no. It's a church that cannot think. It's not capable of seeing beyond their liberal box in Rome. This box is where we're going, you know. Cardinal Roach, the liturgy is where no no private masses in the Vatican. We're off with the the Novus Ordo. (laughs) Guys, wake up. Be leaders. Because Catholics are fed up with what we've been getting over the last 50 years. 
You know, you've you've a you've a whole life. If those that are in the that are clerics in the church, that are given their life in the church, that have consecrated in the church, you have a whole life to give us God. Give us God. Give us prayer. Make. Make. Give us. Give us mysticism. Give us something that the world can't give us. You know, sanctity isn't something you can achieve by your own will. I can't, you can't get up in the morning and say, I am going to be a saint. It completely depends on God to transform us. But you can, you can talk about how you can offer yourself to God better in prayer. You can talk about how you place yourself in God's life better. You can talk about the effects of sanctifying grace, how sanctifying grace works. The mystical life is not talked about in the Synod. Nothing, it's completely absent. In the Irish Synthesis document, it's like, you know, it's not like there is nothing there. It is empty empty of anything that will lead anybody to union with God empty because they have it's the fruit of an empty church empty of spirituality we've emptied it out over the last 50 years our Catholic schools Catholic Catholic schools 52% of people teaching the sacraments in Irish Catholic schools don't go to mass Don't go, so the majority, 52% of Catholic, Catholics who teach other Catholics about the sacraments don't have even an ounce of sanctifying grace in their life. They don't go to Mass. If you don't go to Mass, you don't, do you go to confession? No. What does these sacraments mean to you? Nothing. You don't have union with God. How can you give what you don't have? That's on the lay level. But uh, priests and bishops, do you have union with God? Where are the fruits? You know, why was God pouring out fruits from the saints? Because they had union with him and Christ would use them. We need union with God, but we need spiritual fathers to teach us how to have union with God. It is the only thing that will transform the church. This age has to be an age of saints. Because nothing else will cut it. Nothing. And the synod and synodality has nothing to offer us in that sphere. Doesn't. Doesn't tell us. Open people's hearts to prayer. Open them. How do I know Christ? People contact me all the time. I want to know Christ. I want to know Christ. And I say, have you been to confession? I don't know where to go. There's no. I said, well, you know, try Medjugorje. Do a pilgrimage to Medjugorje because you're going to find loads of confessors. Why do I recommend Medjugorje? Because there's so many priests there. You'll have spiritual direction. You'll have confession. Now, people think it's it's the confession, but I oftentimes people would sit down with a priest in Medjugorje. It's not just the confession. They'll have half an hour of spiritual direction. You know, a program, do this, try that, keep in touch with me. You know, it's not just the apparitions and the messages of Medjugorje that I promote. It is, you have all the resources there you're going to find. And you have traditional priests. You're going to find hundreds of priests you're, there is no way you can go to Medjugorje and not get the help that you need. We don't have often that in Ireland. You know, we don't. We don't. We don't promote it in Knock even. It's there, but it's not promoted. We People don't know what they don't know. And, and I'm the voice of reason in this area. If you want to listen to the Spirit, listen to what the Spirit is telling me. And I'll tell you the same thing. Christ said to me, he can make anybody a saint. He can transform them. The only way the church will be transformed, will be missionary, is with theosis, union with God, deification. That is it. 
Synodality, unless it's doing that, won't do anything else. You know, and so you, the, the amount of time wasted. You know, if a woman has union with God, she will be a great saint. She will be a great leader. She will be a Teresa of Calcutta, a Teresa of Lisieux, a Teresa of Avila, a, a Breach McKenna, Sister Breach. It's obvious in that woman she has union with God. It's, it, it speaks for itself. God, we can see a leader in her. That's female leadership in the church for you. A woman with union with God that is transforming the church. We need more Breach McKenna's. We need her. You know, she speaks of God. Where are our spiritual fathers doing the same? Boldly speaking of God against the, a world which wants you quiet. You know, anytime a, a, a bishop speaks up, oh, no, no, you don't, you don't have any authority. Look what the church did, blah, blah, blah. Don't be victims of the past. Don't be victims of other people's sins. Be bold today on your experience of God and give it to the world. Because that's what the world needs. God bless you. Take care. Bye-bye.